My name is Scott Winfield, and I'm the Regional Development Manager with NACO, the National Association of Counties. And I want to thank you all for being here this morning. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about who we have on the agenda, and that's just simply going to cover a way for you all to save money and procurement with your counties. That's why you all are here today. And while we're here, uh, we're going to uh, also talk about some some other additional ways, of not only to help you save money in procurement, but also some time in procurement, because the RFP process can be quite cumbersome. I work alongside David Mann, who is U.S. Communities Representative, and we partner together to get out in Arkansas and meet with counties and elected officials to help you guys understand the best practices and how to best use the program. Once we transition from Dave speaking, our keynote speaker is Chris Lines, which all you in the room are pretty familiar with. And he's going to talk a little bit about the association. And after that, we're going to have a great lunch from Dave, Dave what is this? Whole Hall? Whole Hall, yeah. Whole Hall will be, will be served later on the day. I hear that's a local favorite. And please, I want you all to feel free to ask any questions. We are here to help. And that is NACO's mission. How can we help create better counties around America? One great thing about the association, and I must tip my hat off, is the state of Arkansas is 100% members of NACO. So I would love for all to give a round of applause for that. And that is due to the leadership of, of Chris Malone. So with that being said, I hope you all have, have your thinking caps on and, and maybe find some interesting tips that you all can take home to your communities. But now I want to go ahead and allow Dave Mans to speak and go through his presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. So we have a microphone, but uh, do we need it from all here, okay? Yeah, it's okay. If, uh, if you feel like you can't hear us, it's right here. We'll turn, turn the microphone on. But um, I, I think the acoustics are, are well here. So uh, anyway, thank you for attending. My name is David Mans. I'm with uh, U.S. Communities. And uh, we're going to spend a little bit of time kind of learning what that is. And ultimately, really why it matters to you, right? That's why we're here, is to learn a little bit more about how we can maybe be more efficient, possibly more secure in our contracts. We'd love to save money, maybe develop a new partnership that we didn't know we needed or was a pain point that uh, we now realize that we have. Uh, so we were created, uh, based, I'll tell you a little story, we were created out of, out of California. And, you know, don't throw stones, I'm not from California. Uh, but we were created uh, by a couple of counties in California, where two directors of purchasing were great golf buddies, and uh, they kind of give each other a little bit of a hard time on who would put out a better contract. And apparently, that's what you do in procurement. You spend your time talking about buying stuff, right? So they uh, they would talk about, oh, I've got a copier contract. I'm going to eat your lunch on this next one. I write a better RFP than you do. And so uh, it went back and forth. But eventually, they were like, you know what? Let's put our own contract together for two counties and bid that out instead of each doing our own. And so they did. Well, guess what? They got better pricing. They also learned a little bit from each other on terms and conditions and maybe how to write some things that gave them better protection. And they thought, well, this is awesome. Let's recruit. So they started calling, calling their buddies in California counties and saying, hey, we're cooperating together. We've got bids coming up. What do you all think? Let's try to organize together and put some bids out. With that, the National Association of County saw and said, hold on now, that's awesome for California, but why not all your other brothers and sisters from around the country? What about Arkansas? What about Texas and Louisiana? Those counties, parishes, they also need the opportunity to participate in this as well. So with that, we saw the National Association of Counties, U.S. Conference of Mayors, NIGP, all say, this is awesome, but let's make it a GSA-type contract only for state and local government. Right? The federal government buys like the federal government, but each little city and county buys like a tiny city or county. Well, that's not very fair when somebody right down the road is buying the same stuff, putting out the same kind of contract as you are, but you're paying so much more than you would if you leveraged it all together. All right, so as we go through, I'll also give you a little uh, story about uh, a small company in Texas that helped create what U.S. communities is today. So we uh, say that we were created by government for government. All right, we were created, created. Speaking for a while, my apologies. Um, 
So we were created by government for government to help save time and money. That sounds cliche, right? But once, when we go through this, we'll show exactly what that looks like, what it means. I mentioned earlier that the people that created us uh, and owned us were National Association of Counties, U.S. Conference Mayors, all of these people, and they helped kind of create what we see today as U.S. communities. So what makes us different? Have you all been approached by any other cooperatives? Can anybody think of anybody that you've seen out there that maybe has knocked on your door? NJPA. NJPA is one of them. Don't be shy. Who else? Tip Stabs. Tip Stabs, yes, sir. Who else? Anybody else heard of a cooperative out there? TCPN, that's right. Well, I'll tell you, the list is longer than my arm. There's, uh, there's a cooperative, it's like Baskin Robbins. There's a lot of them out there. In Texas alone, there's 38 of them, just in Texas. And that's not including all the national ones. And we're seeing a trend in more of these cooperatives starting up. And so what we're seeing is we're having to more, now than ever before, kind of differentiate ourselves. And what's different from TIPS TAPS or NGPA or TIPS or uh, Value Point? What's, there's a lot of noise out there. Which co-op do I use? I'll give you some information on it today, and hopefully it makes that a little bit easier. So with U.S. communities, it's similar to your local or regional cooperative, except everything we do is national. It's all very, very large. We have, you see the papers out there in front of you. And we have more. So if there's more than three of you at the table, we can get more to you. We have 43 contracts. And so of that 43 contracts, everything we've done is, is, has done is, is national. A lot of local uh, co-ops will have possibly hundreds, if not thousands of contracts. Everything from, you know, here's a few dozen fasteners to, you know, here's a large program. Everything in between, all right? So something else that you'll see is that uh, we're aggregating the purchasing power of all of the agencies together. So there's 90,000 potential agencies out there, right? We started with two in California. It's grown. So typically, our contracts are 100 million or more. When we put something on the street, it's over 100 million dollars. And then, as far as terms and conditions and value, right? You think about driving the cost down through higher leverage contracts. You also get the expertise of professionals from around the country government agencies that come together to share best practices in terms of conditions. How often does stuff with USDA change, or with FEMA, or reimbursement dollars, or grants, and new, new things you have to jump through hoops in order to get your money? It's, it's every day it seems, right? You've got something written, and a year later, your terms and conditions really aren't strong anymore because there's been changes with the two CFR 200 regulations federally. Well, now am I going to get reimbursed for my child nutrition? There's so much stuff. So this helps make sure that you're using a contract that has the latest benefits to you all for protection. And if there's ever something that I say along the way, like an acronym or something that doesn't make sense, please stop me. Let this be an open group because if you don't understand something, there might be somebody else next to you that doesn't understand either. So don't be shy about raising your hand and asking me a question. So uh, everyone's familiar with NIGP, is that right? They're the largest purchasing trade association for all of public procurement. So if, uh, has anybody ever been on NIGP codes? All right, you might be sometimes more familiar with them. They're the ones that created this. So this is the largest trade association for all public procurement. These are individuals from all over the country that get together to develop standards for procurement to develop either NIGP codes or, uh, or uh, other ways to kind of uh, commoditize items, list groups of items. In addition, they also said, man, with the 100 cooperatives that are out there, we're seeing a need for someone to vet them, right? What we're seeing is co-ops coming in and the names are getting hilarious. They're running out of names. It's like fun buy, there's goodbye. There's lots of names out there. And so they're coming in and saying, you know, hey, pick a contract, pick a co-op. It's like a, a used car salesman or even a watch salesman, some of them. And so now procurement professionals are like, I don't know, before I had some really good co-ops, but now it's, there's so much noise, I don't want to use any of them, right? And that's throwing baby up the bathwater, right, kind of thing. So NIGP said, we're going to take this on. So they spent three years developing a very long list. It's 192 items uh, that you have to pass completely to vet cooperatives out there. They go through your entire procurement process. They go through how you advertise your bid, how you review it, how you post it, 
and they give you a grade on all of it. And so U.S. Communities uh, has this NIC accreditation, it's the NIGP uh, National Accreditation. And we're proud of that because what we do is, it's difficult, it's painstaking, it's very hard, it's very large, all the things that we work on. The areas that we're going into also aren't just pens and pen pencils. It's difficult procurement. It's pharmaceutical products. It's food. It's, um, uh, we have a new contract with McKinstry, right? There's a, with, uh, with energy consultation and figuring out ways to save money on very complex procurement. So those are the areas that we're really gravit gravitating toward, right? Is things that are a lot uh, more difficult to procure. We've had an advisory board for years. Uh, this is a group of uh, directors of procurement in several different areas. So not every state is covered in here. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a, um, an Arkansas representative on here. Uh, I'd say yet, yeah, we'd love to, to figure something out. But we have directors of purchasing that spend a lot of time with our program explaining it to others, leading contracts for us, and being an advocate for not only cooperative purchasing, NIGP, but also U.S. communities. They'll, they'll be willing to say, hey, uh, you know, tell people that they can call me if they want to hear from one of their brothers or sisters about their contract, right? You all don't want to hear from a salesperson, you want to hear from, hear from a peer. They can be a peer that can tell you about what they've used in the program, their familiarity with it. They get together with us once a month on a phone call, and we go over challenges. What's, what's new? How do we buy local? Who here has been, you know, topics have come up. Who's been successful with local or minority spend? Or what about lead certifications? What about FEMA reimbursements? We hear a lot about that in Louisiana, Texas, up here with some of the hurricanes we've had. So they share best practices not only within themselves, but they communicate that out as a best practice to all the, of our membership. So for our program, I mentioned it's kind of like GSA, but for local government, right? So our program is not for federal agencies. It's for everything else. Cities, counties, special districts, fire, sheriff, some others that you might not have thought about, um, colleges, universities, K through 12 can use this. <coughs> and then lastly, nonprofit. There's nothing in there that says that nonprofit can't use it. And, and really, how that came about was there's some kind of quasi government agencies, maybe some healthcare uh, or, or um, clinics that have a for, uh, nonprofit section of it. There's agencies or associations that are nonprofit that can benefit from this as well. So all of these can. So if you even have a church or uh, you know, uh, 4-H, something like that, they can all benefit from the U.S. Communities Program as well. That's who all is eligible. So here's us bragging on ourselves a little bit. Over uh, several years, we went from two members in California um, to, and they don't change it, we're really conservative. Uh, they say 55,000 members. <coughs> Um, in our system, when you look, it says almost 70,000, but they always want to be uh, conservative. So we have 55,000 members of the 90,000, uh, but last year alone, 68,000 used our program. Uh, of that, 2.7, 2.8 billion uh, dollars spent through it, and we should see an average savings of around 10%, and that's all over the place, right? You might see huge savings somewhere else. I know one great example we're not gonna dig into, but we can tell you about later, is the state of Arkansas with their food program. Uh, literal apples to apples, which is saving a lot of money. I just, just heard just a few minutes ago about just a savings they've had of thousands of dollars on something they were buying right through, just before, now through the U.S. Communities Program and saving just a ton of money. So it's, it's been fantastic. I can't wait till we actually see true matrix on what's actually happening there. And we have 600 new participants every month. We'll go through here in a minute on how to register, how to become a, a, a member of U.S. communities. What I'll tell you is it's free to use, all right? You register on our site, there's no cost to do so. U.S. Communities was created as a nonprofit. Um, the agencies, or excuse me, the, uh, the suppliers pay U.S. Communities an administrative fee to manage it all, right, to do the contracts. So that's how we pay my salary. Uh, and some of us around the country get paid to do this. Um, there's no uh, cost to participate, so you don't even, you all don't pay a percentage. So if you use somebody, you don't have to pay anything. And it, it's also not inclusive, so you don't have to use it. You can sign up and register and never use anyone, all right? You can spend a dollar, spend zero, spend a billion, whatever you want, it's your project. Everything is done by what we call a lead public agency. It's a city, a county, a 
the state, the university, that goes out to bid on behalf of all that 55,000 people we saw, they represent everyone in that, uh, in that solicitation, and it's typically 100 million or more. Some are three or 400 million. That, that's what they've grown to. We like to see them grow because as we put them back out for solicitation, they're a larger contract. Typically yields more favorable terms and conditions and better pricing. Uh, there's a few supplier commitments um, that also make us very, very different. When a supplier wins a U.S. Committee's contract, they're committed to a few things. One, they can't offer better pricing outside of the U.S. communities. So their U.S. community's price is their best overall government pricing. So there's some people that are like, I always can put out a bid and get better pricing. Well, that may be true sometimes, but in the case with U.S. communities, it's a $100 million offering, and their pricing they've committed is the best. So if they do respond to the solicitation, you're free to do that. Um, they're going to respond with U.S. communities. So when they do respond with that U.S. communities contract, that's because they have to meet this commitment, right? They can't bid on something locally for $30,000 and get better pricing than what they would give for $100 million, right? Does that make sense? Another commitment they have is they can't be on any other national cooperative, and here's why. So we mentioned a few, NJPA, uh, NASCO, there's a few other national cooperatives like us. Since we only have 43 contracts, for you all as a value, we don't want a supplier to come in and say, we're on eight co-ops, pick one. Well, which one is best? Yes, right? They, they, can't, they can't answer. You don't know if you're really going to get the best deal. So what we're seeing now is a major trend where people are doing solicitations for cooperative contracts. So they're responding and saying, we're going to put a, a bid out. You've got to bid with what your best co-op is. They're doing a bid for a bid for a bid, right? At some point, there's, the redundancy doesn't yield you too much, right? You can't, you know, at some point, you just can't filter water enough. It's filtered out, right? So here, you have the commitment that within U.S. communities, it's their best overall government pricing, and they're not going to be on another, on another national cooperative. They might be on a small local co-op, which makes sense, but not a national one. All right, so you all, I tell people, this is my assessment of working with procurement the last 20 years uh, in government is um, you all don't get too many attaboys or pats on the back. There's not too many parties about how amazing you do. There's not these giant bonuses you get because you saved the city or the county or the school district a ton of money, right? There's just really your job and some risk, right? So you're not super innovative. You're like, you know what? I just want to find a whole new way to procure today, you know? Just, just gonna, just gonna wing it because I'm bored. There's not that, right? So if you're not comfortable with a different process, or a salesperson comes in and they say, "We've got this amazing thing called U.S. Communities," but you've not heard of it, you're like, oh, I, you know, it's not worth it. I've got a stack of things to do, right?" And so what we try to do is come alongside you all as a representative to give you the information you need, and then offer you other peers locally or around the country to help give you that comfort level, right? It's not worth saving a few thousand dollars if it's going to cost me my job. And we get that. And we try to explain that to the sales representatives to say, put yourself in their shoe. Don't give them the razzle-dazzle. Give them what they need to be confident to go before the mayor, the council, the judge, whomever, to articulate this message of savings through a program that you might not be familiar with. So what I'll offer is, in all of the thousand challenges you have every day, from a flood to sh budget shortfalls to a judge having to go out for re-election to a bond coming through, whatever it looks like, uh, we're willing to come alongside you. I don't make a mission. I'm here literally just to serve you all, to help you achieve whatever it is you're trying to achieve in your area. And then also, bet what the salespeople say, if they say something that seems crazy because they want to make a dollar, I'm willing to be you know, that resource, that, that sounding board to say, well, this is what the contract says. This is what they have to do. All right, so we're going to go into, uh, I want to go onto our website for a minute. How are we doing? Let's, uh, I want to show you just quickly uh, how to go to U.S. communities to, uh, to register. So, because I think that's important. And I don't want this to be death by PowerPoint. <clears throat> communities.org, it's a little small, but uh, we'll, we'll guide you to it. uscommunities.org 
If you're not yet registered with U.S. communities and want to do so, this button right here, it looks like hieroglyphics, but I'm, I'm pretty positive it says register. Uh, click on that, and it's going to ask you for basic business card information. It's just your address, phone number, and it's going to ask you for a TIN number, tax ID, or employee identification number. That's so that they can track your sales reporting. That's it. It also becomes your U.S. community's account number. So one of our suppliers, they're going to look in here and see it and say, okay, they're great. They're a member of U.S. communities. So you're going to uh, register. You're going to pick your state and then go through the process. If you're already registered, it's going to be a login, and you're going to go uh, use your email address and your password. If you forgot it, hit reset password. It'll send you an email to do it. Now, what I'll tell you is 98% uh, of the stuff that you'll find on our site is open. You don't need a password for it, OK? The only thing that you need an actual password for in our website is to get pricing files. Some of our suppliers, yes, ma'am? Can you use more than one Login. Yes, it's all. For county, I mean, does it have to be different entities in that county can use the same 71 number, but have different logins? So you can only have, uh, it's email driven. So if it's one email, it's one login. Uh, we prefer it not to be one that's shared by all, only because if you have people that leave the organization or come and go, uh, you'll have to just manage the password. There's nothing that they can go in and purchase. So even if you have somebody to leave that can log in, they can't do anything on your behalf other than look at your information. But we still don't like that, right? It makes us feel kind of icky. Yes, let, let me explain a little bit how the Arkansas counties are going to be set up. You're, you're in a room in front of several different office holders within counties. So you've got one taxpayer ID number, but each office is autonomous. And Scott and I have been talking about okay. this. So each one of those offices may want to procure things for that office but they go back to that taxpayer ID number that another office is using as well. Makes sense. Okay. I we think that's, together. we got to figure out how to get through so, that. So we don't need to register then yet. Let's see so what you still, So you still can. Here's the only thing you might, if it's all one tax ID, you might be getting multiple agencies representing in the total sales. So you won't see your stuff. You'll see the entire tax ID stuff. So you can still log in and see it. And I'll work on, uh, I'll take that as a note for maybe some special reporting to give you individual breakouts on what, what you all are seeing. We can do it by just the agency name or we can do it by just city. Um, so we'll work on that as a, as a project, as a takeaway. And, and to Chris's point, I've traveled around the state of Arkansas and, and I personally, uh, a couple, couple months ago, I went to Hempstead County and I met with the judge. Then I also met with the sheriff because of the structure of the local government here in Arkansas, to Chris's point. So I knew that they had different tax IDs. But what I want you all to take away from that is that myself and Dave are willing to go out to specific offices and make sure that we get you all the custom set up with the right ID and the right information. That way you can take advantage of US communities. The reason being is because one of the other counties counties in another state did not have the correct tax ID in the system, which caused them to show in the system that they weren't getting any credit. So what I want to just echo is that myself and Dave are willing to make ourselves available to provide you that help if you need any help logging into the system and making sure that your information is correct and that you're also getting credit on the back end for your spend the office system. And we can do that um, live visit, come and see you, or you know, a phone call or a conference call, so we don't have to wait for you know days, weeks, or whatever to get out to you. So uh, I'll give you my contact information. Please use us as a resource. I'm here to help. I say I'm kind of here to serve. Uh, I love what I do, and, and, and uh, working for U.S. communities, I get the opportunity to not have to sell anything, which I love, but just be a resource to you all to help provide a service. So, um, so when you log in, you'll see your sales information, you'll see pricing files. On our open site, I'll show you this, and we'll go through, we're gonna let you hear, and then will be brief, uh, from the, the suppliers that paid for this, paid for the lunch, um, and for this opportunity to get together. Uh, they'll, they'll each introduce themselves and a solution that they have, very specific. So you might think, okay, well, now I get what you do, instead of them just saying, oh, we're amazing. Um, but let me show you some of the stuff that you can do on our website. So when you go here, all of our contract documents, 
are open on our site. So if you want to go in and vet a, a particular program, you can. I can't really see any of these. I'm just going to pick one. So here is, uh, here's the CentOS contract. Uh, CentOS is here today. So you'll see the lead agency at the top is Hartford County Public Schools. They're the professionals that I mentioned. They're already going to go out to bid for everyone. Right? So you think, well, what does Mayor have to do with me here in Arkansas? They're the lead agency that went out to bid on behalf of themselves and everyone else, including you all, for a very large national contract. You'll see that they, there's a contract number here given, given, and there's also a term. Every one of our contracts has an expiration. Nothing is evergreen. Nothing goes on forever. All right, there's a lot of other cooperatives that do one-year uh, evergreen contracts where they just they're in perpetuity, they just keep going forever and they just renew it each year. We have a very hard, defined end date for our contracts. And then it goes out for resolicitation. Uh, then it shows you how many people uh, 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 were found responded. In this case, it's two. We typically see we more than that, right? We like to see at least a boxing match, but we want a rumble royal, right? We want 100 people to bid on these contracts, and that's what we go for. And then here, lastly, you can see where it was advertised. So each one of our contracts is nationally advertised, competitively bid, and typically single awarded based on price and value. Some things aren't single awarded, like furniture. Nobody awards to one furniture company. Same thing with us. We don't award just one furniture company. So you'll see that. And then to recap, each one of the suppliers have given those commitments. This is their best overall government pricing. They're not on any other national cooperative and they're going to lead with U.S. communities. They're going to try to tell you about U.S. communities first. So how it works, easy. Register, ask them for U.S. communities pricing. That's it. You don't need to report anything to us. You don't need us for anything unless you have an issue. Work directly with the supplier and tell me you want U.S. communities pricing. All right? So with that, I'd like to introduce uh, a few of the suppliers um, to come up and give you just a few minutes of who they are. And then after that, we'll get the opportunity to hear from Mr. Belize. Um, so with that, Scott, you mind, uh, I think some of those guys are still out there. Let's do uh, Mr. Skip Wozner from, uh, from McKinn Street. He's going to give us a few minutes about who they are, what they are. So this is a great example. I mentioned them earlier. This is who they, um, this is who we uh, just awarded a few months ago. It's a brand new contract. They do an awesome job, uh, but it's one of those examples of something that's not easy to procure. It's not easy to go out to market for. So with that, McKinn Street. Thanks, Dave. Um, my name's Skip Westner. This is Zach Christensen for McKinn Street. I'll let Zach give you a rundown of kind of what we do and what we look at, and then I'll give you a specific example related to counties in Arkansas. All right, so we're McKinn Street. Uh, it's nice to meet you all. Thanks for having us today. Um, as uh, David mentioned, we are new to the U.S. Communities Partnership. We're excited about that. I think this is a great organization to be a part of. We're excited to meet you all. Um, King Street is a design, build, engineering, and construction firm. All right? We do a lot of things under that umbrella. We do ground up construction, new buildings, bricks and sticks, things like that. We also do you know, a more focused look into building systems and things of that nature. But the real tip of the spear that, that I think you would all be most interested in is this notion of self-funded infrastructure redevelopment. That is a long way of saying what we do is we look inside your, your operations and your budget in counties. We find areas of inefficiencies and waste, and we're able through our projects to turn those overspends, if you will, into revenue for the county to reinvest into itself, to upgrade and address infrastructure that has, has you know, fallen into deferred maintenance and things like that. This is a 100% guaranteed proposition. It is guaranteed by us to yield those revenues year over year. Um, and it is a great way, uh, I would say, it, a good way to evaluate if you need this is if you um, deferred maintenance issues are, are rearing their head in your counties. If your budget is insufficient to address all of the you know, mechanical systems and building infrastructure that you have, this is a great way to look at it. We're, we're excited to work with you. So we'll turn over to Skip. Yeah. So as Zach was saying, this, this is really about deferred maintenance and, and budget constraints. So a specific example for um, Arkansas, uh, we did a project. We just finished up the construction phase of it for Sebastian County. Um, overall, it was a, about a $5.5 million project, uh, budget neutral. 
So that means they didn't have to come up with a new funding stream or anything. This was actually monies that they were paying to the utility companies uh, on an average, say, about $360,000 a year annually um, from their current budget got deferred into this project. And that allowed them to do some really outstanding uh, deferred maintenance items like chillers. Um, for them, it was one of the things that was at the top of their list. It let them address some of their issues at the uh, county jail. Um, uh, just typical HVAC equipment, lighting, water, um, a very comprehensive uh, project overall. So uh, very good if you've got deferred maintenance, outstanding items, or if you're looking at having to fund a particular large ticket item. Uh, next, we've got uh, Nick and Kevin from Supply Works. Uh, they were acquired by Home Depot a while ago, so they're a janitorial company, and they're going to kind of give you some nuts and bolts about the two. You get it, nuts and bolts. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, and welcome this morning. Uh, we're glad to be in front of you. As he said, we were bought by the Home Depot. Before they bought us, we were, we were AmSan. Uh, we're one of 13 companies under the umbrella of Interline Brands. Wilmar, Sexar, Traco, AF Lighting, uh, Amsan. So we're the largest janitorial company in the United States and, and we were under that umbrella. We were merged, our names, so Wilmar, Sexar, uh, Traco, and, and Amsan were merged. Northern Colorado, Baker. Yep. To the name uh, Supply Works, was it three years ago? Three years ago. Three years ago, just before Home Depot bought us. <clears throat> and so when you come by our booth and you see we got Home Depot on, we all actually have supply works on our name because we're still that until we go to Florida in two weeks for our national sales meeting. So, so that it's not confusing for you, we're, the, we're the, out on the street, we're the janitorial leg, we're the building maintenance leg of home, the Home Depot company. So everything institutional, so anything for your HVAC, anything for your lighting, your plumbing, uh, uh, just general uh, uh, maintenance on any building, uh, you know, and I tell all my customers that I've got that you can get an entire building to the frame and buy everything back from us to rebuild it. And then on the janitorial side, we have, uh, we, we deal with all of the different uh, factory reps and vendors, so uh, no matter what paper line it is, no matter what equipment line it is, no matter what services you have, we deal with all of those different categories for all of the, the companies in the United States. So. Uh, we go out and, and, and bring this to our U.S. communities accounts, and, and for us, U.S. communities has, has been really huge for us. We're the, we're the ones that won the janitorial bid nationwide on it, and then Home Depot was one of uh, three or four companies, I believe, that's, that's on for the build and maintenance side. So, uh, one, it, it affords us to bring certain uh, uh, aspects to you. Everything that we have is, is online to our, at our supplyworks.com website. We give you login credentials, the pricing is all set across on every single thing so that you can view all of that. <clears throat> My partner has more information regarding the Arkansas stuff. Okay, so um, this past year, January the 1st, we introduced the new, or we were awarded the new janitorial contract for the state of Arkansas in the procurement division, uh, 1721. Um, we do have contract information in the procurement office here in the state of Arkansas. <coughs> So if you need towels, tissue, can liner, uh, bathroom cleaning supplies, that's all on contract. We have that. Now, anything you need like that, we've got. We also have the maintenance supplies are on there also. Um, through Home Depot, we can supply you with those also. Uh, I live in Texas Um I can take care of anybody. Nick can take care of any of you at any time. Just stop by the booth, see us, pick up a car, we'll do anything we can do for you. Thank you. Perfect, thank you guys. So I mentioned uh, one awesome thing about them is you get a rebate back from your sales. So up to 5% back. You can track it, work with the local uh, uh, Home Depot car is what they're called, and you can get up to 5% back on, on your purchases. So that's usually an awesome thing. So we get money back. Uh, Tyler with, uh, with Garland. Another one of those not so easy to procure uh, or contract out. I'm just going to give you a few minutes about what they do. Hey all, Tyler Newton with Garland DVS. Uh, we are a full service manufacturer of building envelope solutions. When I say that, <coughs> roofing and waterproofing, nothing glamorous about it. <laughs> I'm here uh, out of Little Rock, I'm local. Uh, it's covered in the state of Arkansas. 
that I assist with building assessments, uh, whether it's roof or walls, put together options, you know, are you looking for a Honda roof to, to get you through for, for, for a few years, or are you looking for a Cadillac to get you through for the next 40? Once that is done, I will then uh, put together a bid package and help solicit that to Barlin Barlin authorized contractors. I inspect the project through completion. If, if, at the end of the day, I hand you a warranty. Uh, make roofing and waterproofing as easy as possible. Uh, as you may know, with roofing and waterproofing, or really any, any band construction, there are a lot of vendors uh, and contractors out there. But there's really a, only a few you want to step foot on your building. So uh, we're going to help uh, with that process and make sure that that process uh, leads to a good roofing and waterproofing solution. So you don't have to do it. Please feel free to say one. Awesome. Thank you. All right, uh, ACRO, temporary staffing, uh, Mr. Dan has uh, come up and, and talked to us. Um, we've had this contract uh, for a while now, and it's really starting to grow, grow legs and uh, uh, get out there on, on really where they've been uh, strong. You'll see a lot of times when we do these contracts, we think we know where the true benefit is, and it takes a little bit of time for us to see that, and we're really starting to see that with ACRO. Uh, for those of you that I haven't met before, I was the one that clicked accept meeting while I was on the airplane and it shot out the email to everyone accepting the uh, U.S. communities meeting. So uh, I'm that guy. But uh, as far as ACRO, our temporary staffing services contract, really what we provide is an easy to use platform with great pricing. So, you know, any type of municipality, county, school, they can access our system and our nationwide group of vendors and, and use the U.S. community's pricing to get temporary staff. Really, it could be anything from, you know, we had one county, they brought on 200 folks to rake leaves at the county parks for three weeks. Um, you know, to, we do all IT staffing. We do medical staffing for counties that have um, mental health care and things of that nature. Uh, we do staffing for that as well. Uh, we do payroll services. So for a lot of counties, you know, especially like you see um, elections coming up here in a couple of months, they have groups of people that they've used previously, but they need a vehicle to get them all onboarded and take care of all the payroll. Um, so that's really, in a nutshell, what our contract provides to the uh, U.S. community's clients. Um, awesome. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and so I'll, I'll mention an additional thing there. I know what I've seen as a benefit to the agencies uh, with them is oftentimes you have multiple agencies that you work with that you do temporary staffing. They've got very cool software that can manage all of it. So instead of having 12 different payees, right, you've got some guy doing construction, somebody doing law work, somebody doing, you know, kitchen work, and you're going through all these different companies, they can track all of that, and it can be one company you work with. So that's been very helpful, especially for smaller agencies um, to use. So uh, Nate McDonald, uh, one of the most fun things I think you can do is, uh, is playgrounds. So um, they do quite a bit here locally, and this is Mr. Nate. Hope you guys are doing well today. Glad y'all are here. Um, we probably do, I think our company does about 100 million playground sale a year, maybe probably 55 million, something like that. It's a big number with yeah. the U.S. community, so, so it's really happy to have that relationship. Um, we kind of try to focus on just playgrounds, but we can do everything for you. Um, we can do all side amenities, shade, shelter, um, picnic tables. Um, so anytime you guys are looking for park equipment or anything like that, you just feel free to give us a shout. Um, you're going to get the best prices out of us because of the U.S. Communities contract. Um, and well, the biggest reason to use a contract like this when you're buying playground equipment is you want to get apples to apples. So if it's just a piece of steel, you can take it out the bid. You're going to get the same thing. But when you're doing playground, if I design something for you that is exactly what you want, so you were to take it out to bid, and the next guy comes in, probably not going to get exactly what you want. But if you go ahead and purchase off the U.S. Communities contract, then you've really gotten what you wanted, and you've upheld all the steps.
standards that the state asked for. So if you guys need anything, come up with them. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I keep adding to everybody. Sorry for that. Uh, what what I'm seeing, I got to go to the show in Louisiana, uh, and it was the, the National Playground Association, whatever. So it was this entire conference full of these huge play structures. It was a ton of fun. Uh, I'd love to bring my, my kids to it. But what we're seeing today is, is uh, kids playing uh, from different ages. So from, from very young to high school, uh, those with ADA, and even, honestly, our senior communities. We're seeing lots of exercise equipment outside. Right trails where you can walk through and you know do exercises. So they're they're doing a, a ton with that and really looking at how people interact with it and then even putting some digital displays and things of that nature so kids can look at their and you know phone and track their you know their speed through a course or through something and see how they did against other kids. So obviously most of us see you know kids looking down like this. This is a way for them to at least play for a little while and then do that and look at their phone. So uh, very cool innovative stuff. Um, all right, so uh, Tim Ryan with uh, Advanced Auto Car Quest. Let me give you some information. We've had a relationship with them for many, many years, and I've seen Advanced invest tremendously uh, in the whole Southeast region with new stores, and obviously that helps with employment and hiring more people. Thank you. Yeah. I'm great to be here. It's my first opportunity to uh, be at a U.S. community and get in like this. So uh, just real quick about Advanced, I'll share this with you. Uh, throw some numbers out. Probably some some things here that uh, you really wouldn't uh, think about advanced auto parts. Uh, we're actually uh, the largest automotive aftermarket supplier uh, in, in the United States. Uh, some of you are familiar that we did buy CarQuest. Uh, we come together with CarQuest about three years ago, which actually uh, gave us this opportunity with the U.S. communities originally about three years ago to be involved. Uh, we actually have 900,000 products available in our network. We have 50 di distribution centers throughout North America. We have over 5,000 stores. And uh, when we have these kind of conversations, we, I, we engaged in a conversation a little earlier uh, about a brake job for a Tahoe running approximately $1,000. So, uh, you know, these, these kind of conversations that we have when we're out and about like this, it, it is about saving money without sacrificing quality. And I believe that's something that we do bring. There's four, four pieces of the business that uh, advance likes to talk about a lot of times, it is their investment. Uh, we provide business solutions, the inventory, the flexibility, and I do want to make one thing, uh, when it comes to the flexibility, those that have fleet automotive, uh, keep, keep in mind that we can actually customize our inventory to fit your needs. So that's something to keep in mind, uh, providing another opportunity, uh, another solution, uh, to keep us in mind, it's all about cost and quality. Um, the, the cool thing about them is, you know, everybody kind of knows advanced auto parts, get your basic stuff. But with CarQuest, they have the heavy duty things, right? So if you got a big old tractor, uh, doesn't even have any, you know, part labels on it, they can help out with that. Um, some of those bigger, heavy industrial things to, uh, you know, that you might have. So uh, I'd like to take a minute and bind my training folk up to, uh, to give the two, three minutes about uh, training they uh, reinvested here in uh, in Arkansas locally. Uh, they saw the need to uh, open a, a giant facility and hire staff and invest uh, where you know some people aren't. And so, if you guys don't mind, just give us a few a uh, few minutes about what you've done here locally, and uh, everybody knows who Train is. So, a tidbit on what else you all do. Thanks, Alex, everybody. Um, my name is Bill Reynolds. This is Chad Bolton. Uh, we, we love work out of the Little Rock Commercial Office. Uh, I'm not sure if everyone really knows, but for many years the commercial side has been represented by independent franchises. Um, the previous franchise holder decided to go a different direction last year, so we, we had to hit the reset button. Um, we are a factory direct OEM. We have other, over 200 employees in the state of Arkansas. Uh, we have a factory in um, Fort Smith. We did close the factory a number of years ago, but there's still a factory there. Uh, right now we have commercial offices in Little Rock and Springdale, and our Memphis office service is uh, East Arkansas. I know <coughs> most of you know about our equipment offerings. A uh, big part of also what we do is service equipment. Uh, on the commercial side, we can sell anything from two, three, five ton units, split systems, all the way up to your thousand ton chillers. Uh, 
We also do rental services, turnkey services. We're listed in there as uh, energy ESCO, so we can handle any of your energy performance contracting pro projects, lighting, plumbing, everything of that nature. And we're currently doing a big, uh, big energy ESCO project in Bowie County on Texas side, which is part of our region. So right now, the whole state of Arkansas is serviced um, direct OEM by the factory. Um, and we actually just uh, merged with joint Mitsubishi, so we're 50-50 joint venture with Mitsubishi for BRF. I know some of the older county buildings might be might be a better situation with BRF piping and retrofits. Uh, feel free to come by and grab a little building services of all the different products and services we offer. Um, the big part of that, I would say for you guys, if you did run into a problem, is rental and quick turnkey projects. I know sometimes stuff happens uh, with the U.S. community <coughs> process. I think we're able to streamline that procurement process and really handle emergency situations very quickly. Uh, Mr. Chagel, he has been with Train through the uh, franchise for? 20, I've been there for 22 years. Uh, I worked in the service department over there. So <clears throat> basically, I moved over with, with uh, the Train Company when they decided to go in a different direction from the franchise. And I just felt like Train was <clears throat> the best uh, opportunity for me and my family. So that's what I decided to go do. Take your time. One of the, uh, I, I kicked myself, I couldn't get there to see it. Uh, Greg, the guy that manages it for, for uh, the program for training the U.S. communities, uh, they sold a job to a school district that had to get these things installed within like eight days. It was like 12 different schools before the kids came in. And so they had three helicopters lifting air conditioning units and putting them on buildings. And he was taking pictures and video, and I was in a different state, and I was like, that would have been so awesome to see that. These helicopters placing these little, um, so that that was a little crazy. But the whole everybody was involved. Uh, the whole community kind of came out to see it. Uh, they had a big bond. But that that was cool. Training is very creative in getting things done. Uh, last but not least, uh, Cintas. You all know it. Uh, Jeremy Dressler is the uh, the regional, yeah, the regional manager, and uh, really knows the program uh, very well. Cintas has been with us for a long time. And they do a lot of things that you might not know that they do. So he won't address all of that now, because you'll want to kick him out for telling you so much. But when you go and see him, things like the AEDs and, and janitorial, uh, like uh, uh, you know the first aid boxes you have, you know band-aids and stuff in, as well as buying um, clothing, making clothing. So I just call you. Yeah, you're good. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, everybody. Uh, Jeremy Dressler, I'm the regional manager for CentOS. Uh, I've worked with CentOS for 15 years. Uh, we've been on the uh, U.S. Communities contract since 2012. And uh, like Dave said, we do offer a lot of different services, so we would ask that you come by our booth. We've got a you know, fairly short one, one sheet uh, that will show you kind of all the different highlights. But to uh, give you a quick rundown, uh, most folks know us as uh, the uniform people. Uh, so we do provide uniforms for a purchase, a lease, and a rental program. We've got partnerships with companies like Carhartt, uh, ChefWorks, Under Armour, uh, 511 Tactical. Um, so we can provide a wide variety of uniforms. We also have a complete line of hygiene supplies uh, through our facility services division. So things like hand soaps, air fresheners, toilet tissue paper towels, cleaning chemicals to, uh, to help keep your floors uh, or keep your uh, facilities clean. Uh, we also have a floor mat and mop program as well to keep your floors clean, safe, and dry. Uh, and then we also have a, a first aid and safety division which specializes in things ranging from, from band-aids to headache medicine um, to AEDs uh, to trauma kits, you name it. We also provide uh, training courses as well. Uh, so we can provide training on site uh, for things such as CPR, active shooter, forklift training. We have over 100 courses that we can provide training for as well. So again, a wide variety of items that, uh, that we can provide. Uh, some of the things that we see, and I only work with governmental agencies uh, uh, in the state of Arkansas and a couple other states as well. Here locally, uh, we service Little Rock uh, Water Reclamation Authority, uh, the City of Ward, Moralton Police Department, uh, Little Rock Fleet uh, Department. So several, more on a kind of a larger level, uh, more of a regional level, we take care of Tulsa County. We're rolling out contracts right now with uh, the city of Wichita, uh, the city of DeSoto, uh, 
we just rolled out a contract with the city of Kansas City. Um, so we, we take care of a lot of different agencies, but one of the things that I see a lot of times with governmental agencies is a lot of times there's kind of some questions um, regarding a, a couple items that, that we specialize in. Flame resistant clothing, not necessarily knowing if they need flame resistant clothing, but we can provide some analysis for them to help them uh, determine if they need it. Also, ANSI clothing, which is the, the neon yellow clothing that you see a lot of highway workers uh, utilizing. So we specialize in that as well. Again, we can provide the information for you and some training for you so that you guys can determine if you need those items. And then another really big item um, that a lot of agencies talk about is AEDs, Automatic External Defibrillators. And so that's uh, an area where we can definitely help you guys out. Quick story, I won't tell you the agency name, um, but we were recently meeting with an agency, talking to them about AEDs, and they said, hey, we've got one on the wall, we're good. Um, we walked up to the unit, when we opened the door, it's supposed to be an alarm sound, letting people know that there's a situation that is requiring the AED. The alarm didn't work. We took out the AED itself, the pads were expired, and there were no batteries in the AED. Um, and so, uh, fortunately, we were able to talk to them about the service that we provide and everything that, that comes with that, um, and we were able to set them up on a, uh, on, a, on a rental program, on a lease program, rather, for that AED unit. So, sometimes those things are kind of out of sight, out of mind, um, but uh, again, that's just kind of a, a popular item that we see with a lot of governmental agencies, so hopefully we can provide you some information on that. Uh, Cody and, and Stacy are with me, they're on a local level. They're at the booth, so please come by and talk to us, and uh, thanks again for having us. Awesome, great job, man. thank you. <laughs> uh, so, what we kind of see, and what the U.S. community has tried to do is partner with solutions. So not, you can go and buy a widget, right? You can go and buy an item. But when you've got, um, you know, budget issues, or what we talked about earlier, local, uh, you know, minority span, uh, lead certifications, you've got to buy green, whatever that looks like, that's really kind of where we shine as well. The 43 contracts we have, the few suppliers that we have here today, really want to come alongside you to partner. And uh, we're not about selling widgets, but really let's kind of overcome some challenges that you have and give them an opportunity to put something on that table and say, we can't figure this out, come alongside and help us. We're an advocate and a resource for you all. We keep our suppliers contract compliant. We make sure that what they're doing is, is uh, allowable under the contract. And so we're gonna kind of sort of transition. Uh, for those of you that, uh, you know, Feel like man, there's been a lot of talking. Uh, we do want the opportunity to speak with you afterwards, to have the opportunity for you to speak to the vendors afterwards. You're going to stay here. They were kind enough to get us lunch. I'll plug that again. So there's going to be some uh, some really delicious food coming through here in about a half hour. Um, but now I'd like to introduce Scott to uh, transition to the keynote. Thank you. Well, what I want to also reiterate is the fact that U.S. communities and also the association is committed to providing the best value for the state of Arkansas. And that's what this is all about, everyone. We are showing you that we are dedicated to making sure to get you the necessary resources that you need to do to take back to your communities to let them know that you are empowering the people of your community. And with that, I've been partnering, working with Christy Smith and Chris Bellanis to make sure that you are aware of the resources that are available. And Chris has done a phenomenal job of making sure that not only do we promote, but we also make sure that folks are taking action to utilize these programs and resources here around the state. Without further ado, I want to conclude and let Chris Belanz, the AAC Executive Director, come up and say a few words. And I want to also thank him for allowing us to use this space and this wonderful venue to host you all. Thank you, sir. No problem. I appreciate it. You've been great to work with. And to the suppliers that got up and talked, thank y'all very much. If any of y'all do likes, that link and like. <laughs> so uh, you're welcome to fix that before you get out. Uh, I really shouldn't be called a keynote today because I think I have as many or more questions than anybody in the room and learn something new every time we get together uh, with the U.S. community folks. I had no idea Centos did the fibrillators. And that story that he just told about a defibrillator that's battery had expired, y'all check around your courthouse. Don't be surprised if you don't have some of those same problems. You, you probably need to just shut it down and take it off the wall if you've got a dead one. We, we checked ours a couple of years ago and everything had expired on it. And uh, so Becky worked with 
a local group, not knowing CentOS did it, and uh, worked with the local group. And we got new pads put in and, and the battery checked out on it. But, man, you don't want to open one of those things only to find out it's not working. So that, that's a big deal. Um, David, I got a question for you before we go any further that I think will clear up the tax ID question. Okay. So you all use the tax ID number to give rebates back to the to the government on certain items, right? Uh, that's a fun, function of it. If the supply office rebates, that's how we track sales, correct? Okay, so I'm going to tell you, I don't think that there's any, any need necessarily to have a different number in individual offices okay. under the county umbrella because all the money that might come back in, in that scenario is gonna go straight back to county general funding, which then would have to be appropriated back out to individual offices. Right. And I'll let y'all work with, with individual counties on that as, as they sign up for it, but I don't think the tax ID number is gonna be as important as it is having the autonomy between the judge's office and the collector's office over in Crittenden County, because y'all don't wanna order stuff and have it go into the wrong place. Am I right? Yeah. Does anybody have any issues with that? Okay. Y'all do body bags? I have a corner in the room. Uh, we do uh, have... It's a serious question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we've seen blood pathogen suits for the coroner's office. Okay. I, I, I can find out about body bags. I bet y'all do. Yeah. <laughs> Drone, you will have an answer to that before you leave the building today. Right. <laughs> So when I started as a collector, it was back in uh, 1999, and we we were kind of at a loss. Where I look at this through the lens of office supplies more than anything, and I know that we've got judges, we've got sheriffs, we've got coroners that are out there that need more stuff than just what you put in an office. But I look at it through the lens of office supplies, and for me, we had paper coming from one place, we had pens coming from an office supply store down the street that you could walk to that charged us about five times what they should for pens. Uh, we'd go to Walmart and get stuff that they didn't have. We'd go to Office Depot when they finally opened up and try and get stuff there, but they were all the way across town. And so it was just this hodgepodge of where do you go and get things. And so uh, when I looked up and saw that U.S. communities had engaged with Amazon business, that thrilled me. I, I'm like, well, as an office supply wonk guy, I know that you, most of the county folks that are in the same line of work that I was in now might have a single source where they can go and get the best price on things and get it back in to the office. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a mess, and purchasing shouldn't be that difficult. I know right now... Many of our counties are starting to go through the budget time, the budget cycle, and I'd bag any of you who have plenty of money in the coming year to raise your hand. Yeah, see, it just doesn't, it doesn't work that way. So anywhere that we can offer up savings uh, on down the road, if it's office supplies, if it's uh, gasoline, whatever it is, anywhere we can offer up savings helps the county a lot. So I was really, really excited to partner up. Scott, you've been wonderful to work with. I uh, appreciate your kind words and appreciate how, how hard you have worked getting into the state and going around and, and meeting people. The main thing that I want to do is get them in front of you and tell, tell all of you that as you get into this and as you have questions, they're there to help you. And Scott, and I'm here to help you. But between Scott, David, and me and Christy, we'll find a solution that will work for Arkansas <laughs> counties. We're unique. We, we aren't like a lot of other associations across the country. Across the country, most associations represent just the county commissioner level. They don't broaden out and represent everyone in the courthouse like the ASC does. So, so we understand the complexities of trying to do what you all do in a state like Arkansas through us as a representative. And we want you to know that we're there, we're there to help you as you do that. Um, really, I don't have much to add. I think what y'all have done is tremendous. You're gonna have a lot of questions from people about how physically do I use the system. And I, I would encourage y'all to be willing to ask those questions and make sure we get you signed up and using it. Uh, I, I think it's, it's worthwhile and something we all should be looking at. So, are there any questions of me, of the AAC? Has everybody here had a whole hog? <laughs> He's good.
He's really good. So good. Well, thank you guys very much. Thank you, Chris. Uh, so it, for now, uh, we'll just give one more to ask if you have questions about solutions or anything large uh, that you want to ask. Yes, sir. This is a simple question. If you have an Amazon business account, how do I know that I'm getting the U.S. community's pricing if I've already got an account with them? We need to get you tied with one of their <coughs> local reps, and internally they'll connect you with their Amazon uh, pricing. So one of the biggest benefits that we've seen with that relationship, and as you can imagine, uh, Amazon being Amazon, uh, it, took, it took a long time for us, it took almost four years to do what we call an online re retailer. We were looking for the Walmarts.coms, the Amazons. And I think we had 19 people respond to that. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's a new way to find, right? We don't want to go into other, uh, uh, I just, that's a message about body bags. I might have an answer. <laughs> um, so uh, it, it took us a long time to get that done. Um, but they've been fantastic. So I'll work with you. There's also a, a contact us on the website. So if you go into any one of our suppliers, there's a red button that says request contact. So you can go there as well. But I'm, I'm happy to help you get you engaged. Yeah. Yes, sir. Just a quick question. I guess it's more to like the Home Depot. Like, I need shovels, tarps, stuff like that. <laughs> I'm not getting money. <laughs> 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 so that's how you work. Do I have to go in like, to purchase that item? Do I, is that a bid item or do I have to bid every time or do it? No. It just come in and I need. To the U.S. communities, that's already been bid out. So okay. with us, when you go online to our website, okay. it'll show you, that's you'll pull up the item and you'll pull up uh, the pricing. Yeah, so ask them to reference the U.S. community's number on your quote or bid. That's how you know you cover it, all right? Now, if you go in store, you're going to pay the price on the shelf, and at the end of the year, you'll get a 5% rebate. But if you order it from us on the website, supplyworks.com, your price is there, you get your price right now. And it'll be shipped to your office. And it'll be shipped to your office. That's so one of the things when y'all come by our booth, you'll, you'll see the you'll see the pro purchase card. It is not a credit card. Yeah, if we did, what it yeah, is, if you good. open up an account with us, we'll automatically attach you to the contract number. So the price will be set there in the pro purchase card. You can actually use that. If you want to order from us online, it will ship straight to you. Uh, but if you say, say you break the shelf mm -hmm. and say you need to go into the store, you can use this pro purchase card to walk in to any Home Depot, they'll run it, and you'll just, you won't get a, it's not a credit card, no interest charge. We fill it off of, uh, you know, our Supply Works credit line that we have for you. You'll actually receive a statement from us, not the Home Depot. So, I mean, even though we're one, we, you know, we still have the, we still have the, the institutional business out on the street up and down. Uh, the store is the store, you walk in and get their stuff, so like Kevin said, whatever the price is, that's it. And uh, then you get, Sign up for the rebate also. The good thing about that, the pro purchase card, is you're still, instead of paying writing two checks, you still only write one check with the pro purchase card because it puts it directly back onto your supply works account. You only write one check. Yeah, we all connect and get him as local rep if you don't yep. mind. And somebody will come by and, and go through and, okay. and give you your custom solution. Yeah. Any other questions, uh, comments? Okay. Um, is your hand up? You're kind of up? Okay. <laughs> You'll need to get some people on board that, that uh, do supplies for emergency services type situations. Yeah, um, so specifically what? What do you mean? Uh, on 911 equipment, uh, road safety items, just different things that we use for emergency services. Well, on this thing I was looking, uh, this First Signs Education has that first responders equipment. I was looking at that. On, I guess this is some of the. Fisher. We, have, we also have TAPCO. TAPCO does all um, uh, pedestrian, street, all that stuff. Um, so we can talk after, and I, I'm pretty sure we can cover the large majority of what you're doing. I'll address the professional services piece. Safe word, yeah, safe word for sure. Um, professional services is a little difficult to procure, especially on a national level. It's really locally driven. There's a lot of state regulation with regards to that. 
Um, but what I will see is that Safeware for a lot of you here would be uh, pretty fantastic. They, that's who I asked about body bags. They do everything non-lethal. So they don't do bullets or guns, but black jackets, respirators, um, you know, SWAT gear. We even have a company that does SWAT trucks and vehicles. Um, so a lot of what you would buy is, is available through here. And we can kind of go off them uh, together and talk about maybe who to contact for, for what you need. Safeware, uh, Safeware, S-A-F-E. <coughs> and if you don't mind, uh, while we're taking a bio break before lunch, please engage uh, the suppliers here. Like I said, they want to come alongside you with solutions and not just give you a pen and a widget. Um, so if you don't mind, give them some time, uh, allow them the opportunity to come alongside you. With that, let's take a, a little break and you'll smell the food coming in here in just a minute. Reach out to us if you have any questions. Thank you.